Hi, my name is Martin Kemzies. I'm at a company today called Komak, with whom uh, my company Birka cooperates together with. We are developing and promoting the use of robotics in the wood industry. And that is uh, why we're actually here today, because we've been having an open house week this week. We're on the last day of the open house. It's been a full house as well. There have been over 55 customers that have come here this week to visit the robotic solutions that are proposed for the wood industry, which has been a very busy week as well. So um, we've also had uh, live in Portuguese and, English and, and Spanish as well. And um, so I was taking the opportunity that we have three of our models here today, three of our robotic solutions, and explain a little bit about what the, these solutions mean to the wind industry today. Okay? So one model we have is, the, is for the production of furniture, where basically you have a robot, a stationary robot, working with a stationary uh, machining area. Okay? The second one we have is one called cut and mold, which are made for uh, the foundry models, foundry molds, orthopedics, sculptures, um, curved plywood, for example. Okay, and that's very interesting because we've got rotating tables around it. So we not not only have our the six axes that we're used to having in a robotic industry, but we also have the seventh axis, which is this rotating table. Okay. Um, but what I'd really like to focus on today is an area that I've worked a lot with in the past, um, which is the structural wood industry. And the, um, the solution that we're looking at today is, spe is specifically for glued laminated timber beams and for CLT, for cross laminated panels. And uh, we've had now, uh, we're into our second project, uh, and we've had a lot of interest as well on the solution which we're going to present to you today. And, um, and that's what I'd like to present to you in the next um, 10, 20 minutes. Okay? So maybe we should go, first of all, uh, I'd like to present the different elements which a robotic solution, a, a robotic cell, offers you. A lot of people don't know that a robotic system is composed of a lot more than just a robotic arm, which all of us know. Because it's the most obvious um, object in the solution. But there are a lot of other components which are really interesting to know about as well. Because otherwise, it won't work as one solution. And that's what Comac is doing today. It's an integrator of all of these components to make a final solution for the glue lamb and CLT industry. Hi. So now we're going to present to you some of the most uh, interesting elements of a robotic cell. Uh, the most obvious part is the robot arm itself. In this case, there, we have robots that are very small, but the ones that we use here are usually more or less the size that I'm looking at right now. Okay, they're quite large. In this case, we have a model uh, from Germany called KUKA. Everybody knows this, uh, this, uh, this brand. We also have an ABB uh, uh, equipment here at the background, and uh, we also work with Motoman from Japan. Some of the interesting parameters that are looked at in a robot, from our point of view, from the one I'm going to explain soon, are two, basically. Actually, quite a few others, but two principal ones. One is the actual length of the arm itself. Typically, in the background, we'll see this robot in a while. We're talking about a reach of 3.2 meters. The other one is the load-bearing capacity that these robots have. This is a small, very compact robot, but it has a load bearing capacity of 240 kilos. What is the load that this robot arm must carry? Basically, it's the spindle that we see here at the very end of it. These spindles, they have different powers. So we're talking a horsepower starting at six HP and going up to upwards of 65. Um, in this case, we have a medium-sized spindle, but in the background soon we'll be seeing another spindle which is 
40. It's got a, a spindle of 40 HP. These spindles uh, typically are made in Italy. They're world-class spindles. And um, they also work with uh, different rotations, anything from 6,000 to 24,000 RPM. Um, it also, we, uh, so the equipment is, the spindle is, is chosen around the work that must actually be done for every project. So um, it really depends on the project. And that's where we always have to talk together to the customer to decide what kind of spindle we will be using. It's also possible on these robots to have two or three different spindles on the same uh, robotic arm. Another possibility is that we also have a spindle exchanger so that we can change the whole spindle for another one. Okay? An aspect I also forgot about here on the robot to explain what this here is. It's a device that uh, which um, uh, impedes the cables that are all connected to the, uh, to the robotic arm um, don't get all messed up, basically. So we're talking electric cables, but we're also speaking about the, the cooling system, which is needed to cool the spindle because it gets quite heated up. And here we see the cooler itself in the background. Okay? This might weigh about a ton this robotic arm as it is today. Um, then the next element we have from the spindle forward is the actual tool itself. Any kind of tool can be fitted on to fit onto the cone. It's a universal cone that we have where we fit on multiple kinds of, of tools can be put on for the machining of your product. Um, as there's also a, a, a tool exchanger, which we have here. In this case, just for demonstration purposes, we had three different kinds of tools. Um, two were actually doing machining, and one, quite originally, we were also doing sanding, a sanding uh, step in, in this, in this uh, to produce these furniture elements. Okay? Um, what else? Around all of our robotic cells, we always have an enclosure. Uh, it's mandatory in Brazil that such equipment should protect the worker from uh, any possible hazards. Of course, for demonstration purposes, we have everything open for the time being, but at a safe distance, so the people can see the robotic arms and the elements doing what they have to do. The robotic cell has six axes compared to a CNC router, so that gives it a little bit more flexibility. And I think that's the main point that we always have to remember with robots. It's the flexibility behind it, behind the composing of the system itself, extremely variable. Like I said before, this is fixed right now here. And this, this is a fixed machining area. But we have the possibility to work with many tables around it, but also turning tables to make sculptures. Uh, which we have in the background there. That would be our seventh axis. These tables, when they're turning, these rotatory tables, they uh, are coordinated together in the software so that the robot is working together with this rotation table. Okay? Now, we're going to see... Uh, we're going to be able to see uh, a se another seventh axis, which is um, our robot on a rail. So let's go there now. All right, so this is our CLT glue lamb system for very, very large elements. Um, behind us, you see, as before, the same elements exist here. The spindle, the robotic arm, the different kinds of tools that we have. Right here, we have uh, a tool exchanger. In this case, it's an open one. Just to demonstrate it more, more than anything, the idea with the other tool uh, exchange we had was that we also have a covered version so that no sawdust gets into the cones and uh, might uh, impede a good connection with the spindle. So we've got a standard one here for 10 tools. We, we can augment this to 20 or however many tools um, the customer desires. Yeah, uh, Robot is the same. Now, the, the special thing with glue lamb and, and C, especially CLT panels are the 
It's the width of the material that we're working with. We're talking here three meters easily. So for this, we need a table, which is as wide as this. We also see there uh, that there's a, a, a sacrifice table, as we call it, where there are wood beams that are placed on top in case the tool actually hits the table, collides with it, and somehow no damage is done. And we can um, zero plane these afterwards at no expense, at a very low expense. So that is where our glue lamb or uh, CLT panels are placed on top. There's a zero reference, which we typically would put more or less at this position right here. It's a physical placement that we get so that the, there's a very clear zero reference, which the robot can actually start working with. It's X, Y, and Z coordinates. The special thing about this whole, the special aspect about this whole system is this trail that we see here on the ground. It's an extremely robust trail, rails, and um, it's the seventh axis, which the robot moves back and forth on. The trail can actually be, it's a modular trail. We can make it two, three meters, five meters, as we have right here for the demonstration purposes. But to this customer, it'll be, uh, the cu this customer is working with uh, 12 meter presses. So the, the rail is going to be 13 meters long. Uh, it's, it's a trail, which is a rail, which is coordinated together. The seventh axis is coordinated with the other six axis of the robot. Interesting also is the flexibility of such a system. This table can also be raised, and the robot can work from beneath it as well, which in certain cases saves a lot of work. This trail, uh, it's an, another possibility that we have, is that we have two tables working on both sides of the rail, so that while one CLT panel is being placed into position, there's also the possibility of having two tables around the central rail system, which the robot runs on, one on this side and one on this side. In that case, when we feed in the CLT panels or the glue lamb beams on the one side, and that takes that can take quite a while too, the other side is being machined. Um, that's, that's a very interesting aspect, I think. There's another project that we have that's upcoming where we have CLT panels being worked on one side and glue lamb beams on the other, including the glue lamb beams can be pivoted on both ends so that the robot can work from four sides and thus create all kinds of different patterns that we have. That would be the eight axis that we'd be working with. Spirals on the column, Greco-Roman columns. The imagination is the only limitation that we have in this system, right? So, and another really interesting aspect is the flexibility, as I spoke about. And the flexibility here, we're talking about dimensions. And this is really the most important point, I think, around the robot, uh, a, a robotic cell for CLT. The fact that we can work with three meters, two meters, one meter, it really doesn't matter. The length of it also does not matter. We have an arm that stretches three meters upwards, three across, and three down, three to the side, and three to the other side as well. So the flexibility is enormous in this case, you know. There's one more aspect which I think is really, really interesting. Is something we're working on right now, which also would create an eighth axis, as well as the seventh one that we have, which is basically the robot on, an, on another trail going out in this direction so that its arm length can be increased by that much more. But that obviously presupposes a really stable uh, rail system that we have right here. Okay, so that's basically what I wanted to talk about here. It's short, uh, to the point. Um, like I said, it's just a demonstration day that we have. We'll have more news coming up soon after the commissioning of this machine. You'll be getting some more information if you want. Um, and um, that's about it. Thank you so much, Kuka. Thank you so much, Komak. Thank you all for listening. Bye-bye.